Welcome to lesson 5 of this Arduino C++ course. This is part 3 of control structures and control structures are various ways that we take control of the program. Now each lesson is built on the lesson before so if you haven't done the previous lesson it's probably worth taking a look. So a couple of lessons ago we looked at the if and if else statement in the last lesson we looked at the for loop and we looked how the two could be combined and in this lesson we're going to add another control structure which is called the switch statement. Now if you remember back to the uh, if and if else statement we had what were called comparison operators we could say if something is greater or if something is less, if something is equal, if something is greater or equal. There were a number of different comparisons we could make. The switch statement is a little bit different. It's more of a sort of a single value comparison and it tends to look at whether the value is equal to something. Now you might think why not just use an if statement. Well as you'll see if we wanted to ask uh, if q is equal to 1 do this, if q is equal to 2 do this, if q is equal to 3 do something else. If you can imagine that would start to become a huge number of if statements. Now in a recent project that I've just finished I had 135 different options. So you, I don't know if you can imagine writing out 135 different if statements. The code would start to get very very messy. So the switch statement allows us to compare um, a value with a number of different options and do different things depending on what that value is equal to. Now we're not it's not just capable of matching against a single item. You can also match up multiple values against um, the item that we're comparing. So if Q is equal to 3 it'll give an option but we can also say if Q is a equal to anything between 3 and 6 you can do something else. So it's a very flexible method and then finally as part of this lesson as usual we will learn to nest the switch statement with a for loop as an example of how you would integrate this method of controlling code in with other methods of controlling code. Now if that introduction seemed a little bit complicated it's much more difficult to explain this while talking about it than it is to actually show you in the code. So the answer to this uh, rambling on is to get on and look at some code. So let's get on with it. Okay the I IDE is running and uh, as you can see this is the last script that we worked on. It was that for loop version 4 and if you remember we had a for loop inside it we had nested an if statement and if q was equal to 5 we then ran another for loop. Uh, we also had an else statement that was part of the if so that if it wasn't equal to 5 we could do something else. Now the reason we only did it as equal to 5, could you imagine if I put another if statement if it's equal to 6, if it's equal to 7, if it's equal to 8. As I said earlier my last big project had about 135 different options so you could imagine the length of the numbers of lines of if statements that would have taken. So let's get things started. Let's call this the right name. I'm going to call it switch v1 down here switch v1 and we're going to save it as into our control structures switch v1 and we're off right let's get rid of most of this so I've deleted everything there. I'm going to remove the text there. So what we now have is a for statement, a for loop, and we're saying for q equals 0, q is smaller than 20, q++. So this is basically going to count from 0 
to 19. Now notice it starts at 0. Now a switch statement, we're going to switch the value of Q and it's quite a simple sort of syntax to do this. So we put in switch Q, curly brace, and it puts the other curly brace in. And the format is case one. I'm going to put break. And I'm going to add default break. OK, let's explain what we've got here. So this is the switch statement. So what we're saying is we're going to do a switch on the value of Q. Now, this is where sometimes it looks a little bit odd. You would think if we were doing an if statement here, I'll just write the if statement here just to give you an idea. We would write if Q is equal to one. That would be our code. Now that code in a switch statement is all summed up in this case one and case one means if Q is equal to one. If I now add a second line in case two, I'll put the break in again. That would be the equivalent of coming down here and putting in Q is equal to two. In fact, that little bit of code we've written there is actually the equivalent of that. Well, even then it's not quite perfect. We'd actually have to add in if Q is smaller than one because Q could be a zero. So all those four if statements are all summed up in this very small piece of code. And I'll just comment that out with a block comment. And we'll just put a, a comment, a line comment above that. The following if statements are all covered by the switch statement above. OK, so now we can see why we're starting to use the switch. So let's see how this works. The first thing that's a little bit odd is that is a colon there, not the usual semicolon that we see at the end of a line. It's just the way it's written, so get used to it. So case one, that's sort of the equivalent of case is equal to one colon, not a semicolon. Now, this word here, break, what this basically means is if our uh, value of Q is one, we'll do something in here. But because we've now found the answer to what to do with that particular value, why bother checking it against two or anything else? Because we've already found out what it is. What the idea is, is this breaks the switch statement and causes us to exit down here so that it can then go around and run the switch statement again. It might sound silly, but it improves the speed of the program. Obviously, in these little test programs we're doing, speed is not a problem. But if we had 135 different values to check, we're saving a lot of time. So making sure that break is in there is important. Now, what we're going to do here is our usual test. Serial print line. Hang on, someone can't spell. Serial print line. Q is equal to one. And then what 
what we'll do for the for this one is we'll write the syntax in a more um, C++ version. We're going to go Q is equal to 2. So if we were doing an if statement, that's what it would be. Let's copy and paste that again. In here, Q is not equal to 1 or 2. Now, later on when we're learning um, in some later lessons, we'll actually learn how to do an if statement where we can say, is it equal to this or something else? Or is it equal to this and something else? In fact, if you look in the reference, in case you're interested in uh, working a little bit ahead, it says, where's it gone? There we go. Let's come up over there. So if we look down here, if you remember, we looked at comparison operators. And then further down here, we've got what they call Boolean operators. And that is an AND statement. And that is an OR statement. And there's some sample code in there if you want to look it up later. Very useful for making your IF statements more flexible. So there we have the basics of the switch statement. So let's look what's going to happen. Q is going to start at 0. It's going to keep increasing a number until it gets to 19. If the case of Q equals 1, it will print this. If it's a case equals 2, it's going to print this. And if it's neither of those, it's going to do something else. Now, very often when you're doing a switch style statement, very often the default is to do nothing. You know, uh, on my last uh, project, I'd got the 135 cases where it did something, but there were probably another 40 cases where I didn't want the code to do anything. And so default, it was basically that. Nothing, just a break statement. So let's put that back in. I've still got our delay. I'm going to change it down to uh, 0.1 of a second so we don't sit here waiting all day for it to work. And let's see what we can compile and come up with. Put the auto scroll on, stop the auto scroll, and there we go. So we're seeing now Q is equal to 1, Q is equal to 2, Q is not equal to 1 or 2. Now what we could do with is something to tell us what the value of Q is so that we can check it. So let's just do that. We'll put in here serial print Q. We want the serial print, and then we're going to add the next bit, serial print line, because an integer we don't need the exclamation marks. There we go. to scroll on okay let's stop that so our values of Q are coming through the first value is 0 we look across at our switch statement so it's not a 1 it's not a 2 it drops into the default box therefore Q is not equal to 1 or 2 our next value is 1 and guess what we've got a case for 1 so Q is equal to 1, Q is equal to 2. We look across, serial print, Q is equal to 2. 
and then of course from 3 to 19 it's always going to drop down to the default and not be equal to either of them. So as you can see that is a switch statement and the good thing about the switch statement we've started it with it being nested. So you're starting to see the switch statement in sort of its native habitat usually within something like a for loop. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save that and we're going to start on our next version. So here we are again back at the IDE. I have already saved it as version 2 because uh, you really don't need to be watching me save stuff all the time. I think you're getting the idea of versioning. And in the last version we were comparing a value to a single item. So uh, case 1 is Q equal to 1, case 2 is Q equal to 2. In this one we're going to be comparing to multiple items in a single statement. So we're just going to do this very quickly. It's very very simple how it works and what we're going to put in is case we'll put in case 5 to 10 and that's the syntax of it so you put your lowest number space three dots space highest number and then your 10 now obviously you can't be putting your two inside here well I suppose to a degree you could not a clever way to program though but um, it wouldn't get there if we put a break in so put the break in and then what we'll do to see that it's working value from 5 to 10 very simple save check everything is there okay compile There we go, we've got some values, so we'll stop the scroll. Right, so now what have we got? Q equals 0. Q is not equal to 1 or 2, so that's gone through the default statement. Q is equal to 1. We go through that case 1 with a 2. We go through case 2. And of course 3, 4, both revert back to it's not it equal to any of the cases mentioned and then here we go from q equals 5 to q equals 10 it's a value from 5 to 10 and then obviously once we get to 11 as you can see we go back to that default it's not equal to 1 or 2 so that is a quick overview of how you would use a case statement to look at multiple values. Um, very, very simple. And if you can imagine writing your code this way, the reason you would do it this way is if it was a value of one, you want something to happen, value of two, something else happens. From these values, let's imagine that they're buttons on a keypad, which is something along the lines of what I was last doing. So I might say that values one to um, sorry, 0 to 9 are all certain values on a keypad. Therefore, I want to treat them all with a certain piece of code. And we'll look at something like that in a later lesson. But that's the basics of how to use a switch statement where you're covering multiple values. Once again, I've saved the file um, again we're at version 3 and this time we're going to do a nest we're going to nest a for loop in a switch statement now we're going to try being a little bit clever here and hopefully we're going to use um, this one here where it is a case of 5 to 10 and what we're going to do here we're going to put in a for loop 
So we're going to use our integer w, which is why I've left it in the code. And what we're going to do is write for w equals, wait for it, you're going to love this one. We're going to go for w equals q. w is smaller than 15. W plus plus. And in there we're going to put serial print W that should be a smaller case W and then we'll go serial print line w let's explain what we're doing here so do you remember how we have had a for loop before and in previous for loops let's write an example out we might go for w equals 0 w is smaller than 15 w plus plus okay that would be what we would be used to now if you notice in this one let's just comment that out um, normal for loop what we're doing here is we're using variables so what we're saying is we're going to give the variable w instead of it being a variable that we give it its first value is going to be the value of q and then we're going to allow that we're then going to run through our loop while it is smaller than 15 and we're going to see it print out the value of w so what we're now seeing is a for loop that has been nested in a case statement which is nested in a for loop again and I want you to get used to seeing these different statements nested inside each other because this is very very normal when we're programming so let's compile this up and see what we get There we go, we've got some values. Let's shut it down. So, Q is equal to zero. So it's not equal, it's that bottom one. Q is one, we've done that. Q is two, again, we see that one over here. Q is three and four, it's not equal. Now we get to Q is five. So we print out our statement here that q is a value from 5 to 10 and then we do something with the value of q we make w equal to it and then we go up until w while well, w is smaller than 15 so basically what it'll do the first time when it's a 5 it's a value from 5 to 10 and what we're then going to do is go from 5 to 14 once that's finished, the value of 6 comes in, and again we see from 6 to 14, 7, 7 to 14, 8, 8 to 14, 9, 9 to 14, 10, 10 to 14, and then of course we get to 11, and we jump back to a value that is not tested in any of our case statements, therefore it goes to the default. So what you see there is in a way something that might happen quite a lot instead of it printing out the value of uh, w this might then be going off to do something to switch things off and to switch things off uh, in my particular thing uh, project that i was doing recently 
in this area of code I was pressing different buttons that were on a touch screen and this sort of statement was deciding which character was then displayed on the touch screen and which buttons had to be lit up and turned off as appropriate. So this kind of statement within a statement is extremely useful and as you can see the switch statement has the ability to help us to process lots and lots of different values very very quickly. So I hope this lesson has been useful to you. If we look back at what we've done, we've taken control, we've used the control structure of switch, we've learnt to use the case of a single value, and we've also used case for a multiple value comparison, and finally we've nested a for loop with a switch statement. So once again, thanks for watching, and. Uh, as I'm told to say at the end of these things, if you like lessons, whatever, click the like and subscribe. And if you don't want to click the like and subscribe, hope to see you back in the next lesson anyway. Bye for now.